Hello, hello, and thanks for joining us for the Perfidious Pete Plays XCOM The Long War 200th episode extravaganza. Woo, yay! Yes, we've got a great show lined up for you tonight, folks. There's going to be thrills, chills, spills, stunning guest stars, boring guest stars, a live Jerry Lewis telethon, six battles of the bands, two amateur talent shows, an elephant riding a mini bike. A uh, very special Beyond the Grave command performance from Frank Sinatra, and absolutely, positively, no fucking clowns. That's right, this is a clown-free zone, everyone, so no matter how high the excitement gets, no clowns will be allowed on the premises, either rodeo or otherwise. So it's gonna be the biggest wad of nonsensical bullshit you've ever seen since Budweiser unleashed the house of whatever on an unwitting public. That's right, that's, that's our level of crazy, folks. That's it, right there. So grab your Taylor Lautner plushies and a nice lukewarm can of Moosehead beer and settle in for an intravenous injection of heroin-grade excitement, because this extravaganza is primed to explode. Please note, the Perfidious Pete plays XCOM The Long War 200th episode extravaganza does not contain any of the aforementioned items. It is, in all likelihood, going to be a rather dull affair in which a very over-experienced team of troopers assaults a small UFO. Employees of Perfidious Pete LP and their families are not eligible to participate. This offer is void where prohibited and not available in Utah. Please consult your physician before viewing as the Perfidious Pete 200th episode extravaganza is not recommended by the FDA and may be harmful to children or the elderly. And speaking of the elderly and children... Actually, I don't know why, because they have nothing to do with anything going on here. That actually segue makes no sense whatsoever. Tay Diggs has failed to become more psychically powerful, which is not unsurprising. Tay Diggs, not particularly a gifted trooper for us, nor is he uh, listed as one of the feature headliners during the Perfidious Pete 200th episode extravaganza. So, of course, he's been sulking in his trailer. We're going to shove his ass back in the tube anyway, because, well, we've got nothing better to do with him at the moment at all. So, get your ass back in the tube, Tate Diggs. Try and do something positive for once in your life. And know, Stella, how giving her her groove back does, does not count. You can't keep riding the whole groove injection thing forever, Tate Diggs. It's, that's one laurel. It's time for you to, you know, what have you done for us lately, Tate Diggs, I guess is the question. Six alien surgeries for two scientists. It's Canada, so I still want to say no. Eh, whatever. That's fine, Canada. Y you've earned it. Oh, you know what? We should, uh... Speaking of all the psychic training we're doing... Hey, Jennifer Lopez succeeded! Thanks for the reminder, Magil. We may actually go take a look at those officer promotions while we're down here, since we're down here. Who can we make a field commander? Anybody? Anybody want to gig? Maybe, uh, Mel Gibson, perhaps. Oh, oh. Oh. Do we go for the ultimate betrayal? Do we turn coat on the founder of the feast, Mel Braveheart Gibson? and give it to his, well, let's face it, more likable, more attractive, and less irritating, drunk, and obnoxious sidekick Rihanna. And, uh, you know what? I think we might have to. Yeah, we're gonna do it. We're gonna take so others may live. I'm sorry, Mel Gibson, but uh, Rihanna has eclipsed you. Your star has fallen from the heavens, sir. And uh, Rihanna's star is its well on the rise. I mean, sure, singing that song Cake was a huge setback for her career that uh, pretty much made everyone sort of kind of side with Chris Brown in a whole face-punching incident for at least five minutes because, I mean, if you've heard that song, you would you would have punched Rihanna in the face. I mean, the first time you heard it, if she was in front of you, you would have punched her. So, you know, there is that. But still, you are it's, it's back on the rise after the whole Cake incident. 505 defense. Yeah, I really like a spree decor. That's fine. We can roll with that. Dr. General Mr. Jiggles, of course, providing valuable combat advice to Amanda Bynes, whispering ever so subtly in her ear that she needs to find and kill her parents. I'm assuming. I mean, Dr. General Mr. Jiggles actually won't deign to speak to me. He's, I mean, he's too good for my ass, really, honestly. He just, uh, now he won't come anywhere near me, but, uh, you know, that's fine. I don't really need another creepy disembodied voice whipstering in my ear that I should kill my parents because I have like six already. So, you know, at this point, he would just be one more voice amongst the cacophony. 
who else can we promote? And we're just sort of knocking out promotions here for no particular reason or for really anyone who even necessarily deserves them. Just kind of giving them out to be giving them out here. Although I do say that Hugh Jackman here, long overdue for his promotion, Hugh has led a number of successful missions for us. That's right, Wolverine. You're a good man, Charlie Brown, Wolverine. Anybody else want a promotion? Mostly I'm doing this just to shut Magil Barrett the hell up because I'm sick of listening to her. Sure, Penelope Cruz, why not? You're fucking garbage water. Let's get you a promotion. On the plus side, this means we have Penelope Cruz available for fewer missions because she has a longer fatigue time now. And to be perfectly frank, I'm, I'm totally comfortable with Penelope Cruz being less available. I, I really have no problem with that. John claude sure, why not? Semper Vigilance is actually really good. So we'll give it to old JCVD here as well. John claude saluting. Fighting for world peace. And lieutenants? No, we don't We don't need any more lieutenants. I, I think we have more than our fair share. So get that taken care of then. Back to scanning. Oh, you know what? Before we head to scanning, actually, there was one item we want to do. I, I wanna... appreciate your efforts to support the research. Yes, yes, Dr. Commander. Balin. Efforts are appreciated. The blah, 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 blah. New recruits. Yes, yes, yes. Still not enough, huh? All right. Wanted to check and see if maybe we had enough Illyrium to try the uh, try the mind and machine, but it looks like we still do not have enough to research the Vortex armor, so we're going to have to keep waiting on that. How about a mission here, aliens? What do you say? This 200-episode uh, spectacular extravaganza isn't really getting off with a whole lot of extravagance since you won't give us a goddamn mission. I mean, I know, without a doubt, I'm definitively certain that they're going to screw us and give us nothing more exciting than a small UFO anyway. So, I mean, really... Since you're already going to kind of put dig to us, you might as well just, you, you don't need to at least keep us waiting and then be like, oh, here's the big reveal, and then bam, it's a small UFO. I mean, we already know it's going to be a small UFO. Don't don't try and play it up. You're, you're, not, you're not fooling anyone. We all know what's coming. Admiral Akbar or Tory Spelling or both. We could potentially throw both in there. Who are you? Where did this guy come from? Apparently we picked up some random engineer at some point. We'll have to maybe take a look at that guy at a little later date and figure out who the hell he actually is. Let's throw the Skeet blanket in there. Not because we actually want Skeet to pick up Mindfray. We really don't give a shit about Skeet picking up Mindfray. Mostly just because there's, uh, well, there's quite a lot of extraneous semen in Jesse, uh, Jesse Tool Pusher James tube. He, uh, he was in there watching a lot of porn, so, you know, throwing a Skeet blanket in there to kind of mop up the mess has... It has tangible benefits at this point. It really does. Very tempted to send Taylor Moose Lautner, but I don't really foresee a situation where Moose won't just be firing his gun. Charlie Winning Sheen, sort of a similar situation. Let's throw Alan Alda. Yeah, why not? Alan Alda can go be maudlin in his tube. That way, at least when he's silently weeping about the horrors of this conflict, we uh, won't have to listen to him. He can, he can weep inside the tube, and his shame can remain his own. Not that there's anything, you know, wrong with crying about war. It's pretty horrible, but still. Al Lauda, come on, man. 16 Muton corpses, eh, Japan? I'm gonna say no to that, honestly. I don't... Engineers, no, still, don't want... Go away. An alien says his tanks for two scientists. Not a chance, South Africa. Especially not after Canada just lifted a few off of us. We're sort of at a... Minimum on stasis tanks and surgeries. We don't exactly have a ton. Not that we need them for anything other than selling at this point. We really don't. Who wants a kill? Chicken fucker? I mean, would this really be a 200th episode extravaganza without at least one person trying to have sexual intercourse with Enemy a chicken? I mean, honestly, I feel that no extravaganza is complete until someone has violated the cloaca of a tender, tender red rooster. Or hen, whatever. I don't know any breeds of chickens, sorry. I'm a farm boy, but, uh... Don't come down to the specific genus and species name for chickens. That's that's even beyond my expertise. So, you know, I'm just going to say fucking chickens. Which Gonzo did. In fact, this chicken got fucked quite nicely. Shot down somewhere in the middle of Africa. A, frankly, unimpressive crew. Mutons, floaters, and thin men. It's not even heavy floaters. I mean, come on. This is the 200th episode extravaganza, guys. You couldn't even give us a fucking heavy floater, huh? 
See, this this is what I was talking about. We knew the aliens were going to fuck us. From the beginning, we knew they were going to be like, ah, here's the least exciting possible mission you could have for the 200th episode extravaganza. I mean, we knew it was coming. And uh, and then they made us wait for it. It's like, uh, you know, show up, pick up your significant other on a Saturday night. They're three and a half hours late coming downstairs. And then when they come down, they're wearing, like, sweats with some stains, holes, covered in, like, pizza or possibly some kind of pasta sauce all over the front of them. Teeth not brushed, hair not combed, just looking like a tattered wreck. And then they throw down a copy of uh, Pretty Woman and say, let's stay in. That's, that's exactly what the aliens have given us this evening. So thanks, aliens. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it. On the plus side, we do have a chance to send out some of our more elite troopers once again to make sure we can rack up some psychic EXP. So I guess we can legitimately thank them for that. It is sort of what we're waiting for. After this particular mission, we may in fact be able to throw Tara Reed needs another 18 hours of cooking, huh? You know what? Fuck you, Tara Reed. You want to fucking play a slug of bed and stay in? I know you're hungover, which is why you're not up for the mission. And if you want to play it that way, that's fine. You play it that way. We're taking Commander Robin Rihanna Fin... Am I really going to take Rihanna? I mean, seriously, am I going to take her? What's the point? She's our best officer and has the longest fatigue time. Let's just take Amanda the Man Bynes instead. I mean, honestly, we shouldn't really take Amanda Bynes either. We should probably take, like, Penelope Cruz, but... I think, uh... I think my... My position on Penelope Cruz has been, at this point exhaustively documented. It's it's entirely covered. I fucking hate her more than I hate drinking poisonous acid. Which is a lot. And yes, I have drank poisonous acid. I can't recommend it. Don't try it. But, you know, if you find yourself in that situation, or you find yourself confronted with uh, that or Penelope Cruz watching, you'll drink that acid 10 out of 10 times, folks. Seraphim armor, plasma rifle, assorted sniper accoutrement. And that's got... Uh, Amanda and Dr. Mr. General Jiggles, all sorted and ready to rock. Shia LaBeouf, apparently fatigued for an indefinite amount of time, which actually means less than an hour, but eh. Yeah, we could just let some time scroll by on the clock if we wanted to. How close is Shia to a psychic level? I think that's probably the relevant question. Close enough that we should... Yeah, we're going to do it, actually. So let's let some time scroll here. There we go. All right, so we got... Well, I don't care about Paris Hilton or Mel Gibson. A little bit of time to scroll there. That's got us covered then. Back to re-empty this list. I gotta say, I think that may be the single thing I'm looking forward to most when we update and begin our Build 15 playthrough, assuming this ends anytime in the near future, which at its current pace, Build 16 may be out before we're finally done. But uh, anyway, the... The trooper list loading empty at a mission start, I think may be the thing I'm most looking forward to. I really do. So do we need to edit you again, or did you remember your loadout? Good. You remembered it. Nicely done, Amanda Bynes. I'm proud of you. Showing some uh, wherewithal and forethought there. Lindsay Lohan's going on this mission because Lindsay needs psychic EXP. She is sort of uh, trying to make a bid at being the the volunteer. Lindsay's making a play for volunteer status. Largely, she's running unopposed, I guess, except for, except for Tara Reid. And if you're running against Tara Reid, does that actually count as opposition? I think running against Tara Reid actually counts as running unopposed. If you check the uh, the Manual of Parliamentary Procedure, I'm pretty sure there's an addendum in there where it says specifically that if you're running against Tara Reid, you are considered to be running unopposed. Do we have a gunner that still needs EXP? Oh, sure, let's grab our Taylor Moose Lautner plushie. And, of course, Taylor's favorite brand of Moosehead beer, and we'll get ourselves a can. Moosehead beer, oddly enough, only comes lukewarm. That's uh, why I mentioned it before. It, regardless of the actual temperature of the air around a can of Moosehead beer, Moosehead beer cannot be chilled below 54 degrees Fahrenheit. It's, uh, it's always 54. I mean, regardless, it could be 1,000 degrees outside. If you had a can on the surface of the sun, it would still be 54 degrees. Likewise, you could bury it, you know, in... Uh, the liquid helium that's cooling in MRI, and that shit would still be 54 degrees. It's like a degenerate matter. Its uh, its temperature is not relevant. It doesn't relate to its pressure conditions. It's uh, bizarre stuff, Moosehead beer. What are we looking for here? Probably a medic. Let's take, yeah, McBeef. You're like real close, right? We just looked at you. Yeah, you are. That's fine. McBeef's going on this mission. Let's grab McBeef some Titan armor. One of these days, McBeef, we're going to have you another Goss carbine or maybe a plasma gun, and we'll have to retire the old Slim Shady Memorial Slug Slinger. 
And I gotta say, I'm not looking forward to that day. That's gonna be uh, it's gonna be kind of a tender moment for us. We've grown quite attached to the old Slim Shady Memorial Slug Slinger. Do we want to take Jaden Smith on this mission? I mean, are we just going full out ridiculous overkill for the 200th episode extravaganza? And I think the answer to that question is yeah, we're going full on ridiculous overkill. So we are going to take Jaden Smith, mostly because Jaden Smith needs a psychic EXP. So let's give it a whirl. Why not a side grenade? Huh? Give me one good reason. Okay, well, you're right. They are kind of crappy. That is, in fact, a good reason, but uh, I'm doing it anyway. You can give me good reasons all day. That's not going to stop me. Assault Trooper, who do we want? Eh, Sydney or yeah, yeah. Don't really feel the need. Is John Flansburg around? He is. Good. We're taking Dr. Worm. Once again, Dr. Worm, as I always mention, not a real doctor, but he is a worm, an actual worm. He lives like a worm. Likes to play the drums. I think he's getting better, but, uh, you know, he can handle criticism, so if you have uh, any feedback for Dr. Worm, feel free to drop it down in the comments. I know he'll appreciate it. That's got John Flansburg sorted, and I really think that's kind of everything we, we need for basic team. Are we missing anything? Sniper, infantry, gunner, medic, scout, assault. Uh, we, let's take an engineer, I guess. Do we have an engineer who still needs EXP? Thinking maybe Kristen Thousand Yard Stewart? You know, actually, we should take instead of old Mc... Yeah, you know what? We're going to clear McBeef out. We're going to take Thousand Yard Stewart. That's a, that's a gimme. Kristen is going to level this mission, period. Full stop. It will happen this time. We've been sanguine about Kristen finally leveling for a good long while, but this mission, she's going to gain both a regular level and a psychic rank as well, so we're going to bump her and shove her back in a tube. But rather than taking the, the Scarecrow or the McBeef, both of whom are strong candidates here, I think maybe we might take John Rat Leguizamo instead. You know, the rat has uh, an 80 willpower here. I, yeah, that's right. It's an 80. Very, very high. Now, the rat also not max rank, which is another reason why we should probably take the rat. He has a, an opportunity to contribute something positive. He's uh, he's going to give us what we like to call a twofer, because, you know, it's it's a two-for-one sort of deal. Let's make items available, because now Shia McBeef LaBeouf is wearing rat's armor. Then again, I can't say I'd really want to wear the, any armor that Rat had just taken off. John Leguizamo's getting a little unsavory in his dotage. Battle scanners, med kits, Slim Shady Memorial Slug Slinger. John is covered also. John noted with his, uh, well, he's got a penchant for cross-dressing, and there's nothing wrong with that, I'm just saying. He, uh, you know, he adjusts the fit on the armor and pads it out with all the extra, you know, jubbly bits there in the chest, and it loosens it up, stretches it out, and just makes it not fit very well for the, the following troopers he's... Got it all, puts a bunch of shoulder pads in there, makes it, it's all weird, just ill-fitting after Rat's been in it. Also, he sweats, just, I mean, a lot, let's face it. Hmm. You have, you are still not max rank, just enough of Alec Timberlake. I'm curious how that's even possible. You've been on 79 missions, you have 25 kills, you're in a 3-to-1 club, Justin. Let's, let's get you over the top, buddy. We need to get you all the way home. Let's, uh, let's get you that Grand Slam if we can. Some other sports metaphors. Bring home the championship. Bowl a perfect game. Do all of those things, Justin Timberlake. Mostly just get your ass on the ship because we've got a mission to take care of. This 200 episode extravaganza isn't going to, you know, complete itself. Maybe they'll put that in build 16. You don't actually even have to play. You can just put it up and the troopers Prepare will uh, operate under an AI for you. That'd actually be kind of sweet. I might watch the AI play a campaign just to see how it did. I'm guessing it'd be real, real boring with, South like, Africa everybody taking advantage of every line of sight piece fast. of bullshit to stay out Our of the range of all the other troopers. Area. Gotta guess we there'd probably be a lot of Overwatch and nothing happening. Any survivors. Sort of like a Twitch Plays Pokemon, except with less profanity. So Operation Burning Blade taking us down home to Wisconsin, South Africa here with the Big Red Barn. Little known fact, Wisconsin actually uh, sent settlers to South Africa in the late 60s. And, uh, well, the Wisconsin colony down there has gotten pretty big. There's a very big, sort of like a little Milwaukee kind of thing they've got working right deep in the heart of South Africa. So if you're in the neighborhood, visit little Milwaukee. They've uh, got some of the greatest cheese the world has ever seen. Battle scanner from Leguizamo. I, you know, do I even at this point need to mention sort of what our plan of attack is going to be here? How many times now. have we done this map? I mean, we, we all know what's coming. We, we've done it. We've been there, done that. 
Mountain Dew, whatnot. It's it's not gonna be interesting. Two hundredth episode Bortasm. Or extravaganza. All right, so let's just uh, put old Amanda Bonds as high in the air as we can get her in like a corner of the map. And yeah, that's fine, Amanda. You can just hover there for pretty much the rest of the game. Moose, head on out. You know what? We can go at a run at this Over point. We've got the battle scanner out, so we know it's safe. For. Yes, there's a milk canister over there, Taylor Lautner. There's always a milk canister over there. At some point in your career, you have probably picked up that same fucking melt canister, if we're perfectly honest about it. You've probably not only been there and done that, but actually were the guy we tasked with picking it up and bringing it home. Overwatch, aye, aye. Timby, Overwatch. Roger. Jaden, why don't you just go at a crazy sprint? Got it. Moving. Jane Smith coming off the rails on a crazy aye, train. Aye. Actually, I think Jaden Smith is already well off the rails. And uh, I don't think the crazy train operates to out where Jaden is. Jaden's so far gone, he can't catch a train back to crazy. What else have we got here? So, Jaden, yeah, it's fine. Just go grab the meld canister for us. Got it. So, I'm going to guess there are some aliens in that spaceship up there, probably, huh? That's what we're looking for. Yeah, it's another meld canister. What a surprise that it would be right where it always is. Moose? Big cover behind one of the ostentatious tractors here that uh, this family of farmers sees fit to lord over their more plebeian brethren. Three tractor heaven bastards. I'm telling you. It's just, that's just gloating. Just, it's ridiculous. Three tractor. This may pop a pod, and honestly, I don't even really care. Given the caliber of opposition we're likely to face on this mission. I don't, I don't really think we're going to be in any danger, even if we just ran in there like Understood. just Moving idiots. Out. We could just run in there screaming with our pants around our ankles, fucking masturbating and throwing shit at the aliens, and I'm still pretty Moving sure we out. could come out on this with, uh, with a win. And also some very upset aliens that, you know, they've gotten semen and feces on them. That would be Moving. unpleasant. Perhaps we should do that. Maybe we could, like, a, sort of a morale thing. Kind of just fuck with the aliens a little bit. Yeah, come! Just come in all screaming and frothing out the mouth, Mel Gibson crazy, throwing shit everywhere and smashing people with empty bottles of liquor. I bet, uh, I bet that'd unnerve them. So the question of the day, do we battle scanner? I mean, this is the literally the only question on the map. Do we have, uh, Jaden Chuck a battle scanner in here to throw things, or do we just move him forward and have him take a peek? Honestly, I think we'd probably just move him forward. Aye, aye, Commander. Okay, well... I made that easy since we moved him forward to take a peek. Didn't get a peek. I guess we'll just go ahead and lob in the battle scanner then. And there we go. So Jaden was apparently half a tile short because when he stepped forward around the rock to throw the battle scanner, for a split second he could see them and somehow activated the pod. Which makes no sense at all. On the plus side though, Amanda Bynes gonna get a gonna get to do a little killing here. Yeah, it's fine. Amanda, why don't you go ahead and shoot at that guy? 81% is good enough. There's uh, hit number one with an eight damage critical. What do you say? Uh, feeling like a follow-up, Amanda? How do you feel? Good? Bad? Indifferent? She feels good. She feels pretty good. Amanda's uh, feeling pretty good. I'd say she feels pretty good. Basically feeling pretty good, Amanda Bites. Ah, fuck it. We're just... I, I'm, I'm... Seriously, my disdain for the enemies here is, is total... That's how I'm going to describe it. We're just going to have Justin Timberlake charge in and start murdering. That's right, Justin. You heard me charge in and murder. You know what? Can you electropulse and kill that guy? Yeah, do that then. That's fine. Take the kill. Whee! There's a dead alien. Hooray. He's down. Dr. Worm, what do you want to do? I'm thinking maybe you should run and gun, Dr. Worm. How do you feel about that? Pretty good? Yeah? Dr. Worm, he's feeling good too. Man, everybody's feeling good. Everybody's pumped up for this fucking 200th episode extravaganza. Our guys are fucking cranked up and out on the pointy end. These guys are ready. They're large. They're in charge. They're feeling powerful. Sowing their oats, ready to go forward and, you know, get some shit done for us. Yeah, psychic EXP is the important thing, so how about a little bit of panic? Let's make sure this guy never gets a chance to do a goddamn thing. There you go. Lindsay Lohan delivers on the panic. 
And you know what? We'll probably go forward and mine Fram for basically no reason. Simply because we can do it. Watch this. Mine Fray! Woo! Psychic EXP for case 2 Voices. Yeah. Voices in your head, you motherfucker. You know, we could just sit here and do this to this guy all day, because he'll regenerate faster than we can actually do damage to him with Mind Fray. This is uh, hearkening back to a little bit of a game I like to call Final Fantasy Tactics, wherein you would corner a chocobo and just throw rocks at it until everybody was a calculator. I'm getting kind of a similar feel here. You know what? Let's suppress it too, because it'll be funny. X ray lockdown. Yeah, he's way locked down. Mind frayed, panicked, suppressed. That was really specifically just an absolute waste of ammunition. Would have been way smarter to have him uh, steady weapon there, and I didn't do it because I don't care. You heard me, I don't care. Not a lick. Hey, Rat, why don't you uh, just go stand out in the middle of the open and hit this guy with a psychic power? What do you say? Feel fun? Yeah, looks like fun. It is fun. Go ahead and do it. Everybody's having a good time. We're getting everybody in on this action. That's right, I'm going to go yell at a chocobo and then throw a rock at it. Hey, Jaden Smith, you want to go yell at a chocobo? It's real fun, dude. Check it out. Watch. Ah! See? Jaden Smith yelling at a chocobo. Getting them job points. I can't help but think that even with uh, all the job points in the world, Jaden Smith is still going to be a terrible, terrible calculator. I wouldn't trust him with that kind of power. Really, I wouldn't. Let's have someone maybe shoot at him. Kristen Stewart, why don't you shoot at this guy? You know what? Actually, why don't you throw a grenade at this guy? Destroy what little cover he has. There you go. Nicely done, Case, dude. Gonna make him a little easier to hit. Honestly, Amanda Bynes, I think we're just gonna have you come and cop a squad on the roof of this barn. Can you get over there, Amanda Bynes? Amanda Bynes cannot quite make it to the barn. Yeah, just sort of get over where you can get. It's fine. Amanda Bynes. Doesn't really matter where you're at. From there, you can basically hit the map anyway, so it seems like it'll be okay. JT, what do you say? Take a couple shots here. Nicely done. And why don't you just follow that up with a kill, because you're the one guy we don't have to abuse a psychic power. Or you could just fire into the rock behind his head. That's fine, too. I mean, it's not like he's fucking going anywhere, so I guess it doesn't no really matter. On selected target. Yeah, Taylor Lautner, just kill him, please. Thank you. Out of the game. That was a good critical. Kind of upset Taylor Loster, Taylor Lautner rather wasted it Get on that down. guy. Seems like he could have maybe conserved that for a little more Reloaded. dangerous target. Not that there are going to be dangerous targets on this mission. Solid Come on. Copy. No danger here. We're actually in more danger of Kristen Stewart swallowing one of her own grenades than we are on anything on this map hurting any of our troopers. Kristen Stewart, more likely to sell farm. What do we got? Case do. Yep, she's down there just staring longingly at a grenade, confused with whether it's a grenade or actually it is a pineapple. Somebody called one a pineapple in front of her once, and now she's actually not sure whether it's fruit or a weapon. She just not doesn't want to take a chance, but they do look so delicious, she just can't quite make up her mind. We're going to actually toggle flight mode. I don't want to run out of gas here. Boots on the ground. Reloaded. We're going to have Amanda Bynes go ahead and reload. She can walk over to the edge of the thing next turn and pop the pod. That'll be fine. Lindsay, did you head up here behind this stack of hay? Doing an overwatch for us. Kristen, you know, a little dash move's Already not going to hurt you. There. We could have Dr. Worm. You know what? Let's have Dr. Worm come out here and just take a peek for us. Dr. Worm sees nothing, nothing, which is fine, honestly. He can get that meld canister for us next turn. We'll have JT dash over in this direction, do a little bit of reloading for himself. Reloaded. There you go. Dustin's got that shit sorted out. Bring the rat up to this corner cover. Moving to designated position. And Jayden? sure what I want to do with you. Why don't you come over here and we'll have you throw a battle scanner out of that door next turn maybe just to see what's going on out out in uh, Muton Town. Taylor Lautner, you can just dash. And I think you're last man to act, right, Taylor? Yeah. Last man standing, Taylor Lautner. Apparently we got some Mutons hiding back over in that corner because they know they're badly unmatched. Oh, nope, it's floaters. Well, it's floaters and Mutons. And Thin Men. So the enemy coming at us all at once in one giant blob, which honestly is not really that much of a problem for us. 
those thin men dispersing, apparently having a Let's rapid change of heart about precisely where they wanted to be. No idea what that guy was hoping to accomplish by flying high, but, uh, well, it's, it's not going to work. Dr. Worm, we may have you run and gun, buddy. How do you feel about that? I'm thinking of run and guns probably in Dr. Worm's future here. Yep, definitively a run and gun to Dr. Worm's future. So, Dr. Worm. Solid copy, Commander. That was a total misclick. Dr. Worm's going to be standing right out in the open. Yeah, that's, uh, that's not good. We'll go ahead and have Dr. Worm take this shot, which he missed. Fantastic work, Dr. Worm. Damn it. You've uh, taken what should have been almost a slam dunk guarantee no injury mission and turned it into what could be a dead Dr. Worm. Lindsay Lohan certainly not helping matters any. Target still up. Can't, yeah, uh, uh, we all noticed, Lindsay. Why don't you take the higher percentage shot here if you could? Gonna need a double hit. Unfortunately, yeah. Lindsay getting something done for us. Okay, Stu, your movement is I'm substandard. Rolling. And I'm sure we'll be fine. Why don't you go ahead and blow up this... Well, I was going to say, blow up one of the Johnston's 17 extra tractors, but you, you can't quite throw it far enough, can you, Kristen? You have to make do with what you got, which is four damage. Uh, Amanda Bynes actually has plenty of opportunities to do some work for us here, but don't necessarily like leaving her just sort of standing out in the open like that. Seems like a rather foolish decision. Oh, yeah. We're going to bring the moose up here to this corner cover, which turns out to have been a terrible idea. Hmm. All right. Justin Timberlake, we need uh, a little bit of day saving here. So my ludicrous and reckless assault style has actually sort of gotten us into a little bit of trouble here. What can you do? Well, you can kill that guy for damn sure. I really can't help but feel that a proximity mine is going to be probably our best option, though. So... Why don't you go ahead and do that instead? Right there. Should be able to kill either of those two if they decide to leave. And we'll have to see what we can do about uh, getting John Flansburg sort of out of the pickle that he's gotten himself into. John Flansburg, of course, noted pickle aficionado. Guy loves fucking pickles. He can't get enough of them. Hot, sweet, spicy, he doesn't care. John, John Flansburg loves every variety of pickled cucumber on the planet. All of them. The man has never met a pickle he didn't like. I was going to say, if we could get Jaden Smith close enough to use the psychic power, we would do it. But it doesn't look like that's in the cards. Which is fine. That's okay. We're still not in any real significant trouble here. We're going to have uh, old Taylor Lautner take a rapid-fire shot at that gentleman. If he can double up, we'll get a kill. So Taylor Lautner helping us dig our way out of our self-inflicted hole just a tiny bit. Amanda Bynes is going to head to the backside of the barn, and she's going to go into Overwatch for us. This guy's got to be looking to shoot at Dr. Worm. Nope. All right. So just a repositioning move from Team Floater. Got to say, a little surprised. Was expecting a little more offensive punch from the boys here. Let's see what Team Thin Man gets up to. Now they've killed themselves, just as we knew they would. And they blew up two of the Jones's tractors, man. A horrible financial setback there for the Jones family. That, uh, man, that's uh, that's tough. The bank is going to come a call and looking for those loans to come due. And, uh, well, I don't know what Joss and his wife are going to tell him. Taylor Lautner smashing that guy's face in. That was that was just ugly. Really, uh, Taylor Lautner just just kind of showing off at this point. Bring the moose up here. Have him take a pot shot at anything he can see. 32, 28. Yeah, let's just go and overwatch them. Neither of those is good enough to really bother with. I'm gonna bring Lindsay up to this corner cover, and I think we may have Lindsay Lohan panic someone because, well, she can. Let's say that guy. There you go. He'll be hunkering down. I'm not sure he can scream, Lindsay, which, you know, I, I don't really think anyone was gonna hear him scream anyway, because I don't I don't know his floaters have vocal cords, so you know, it may literally be impossible for him to scream. Amanda Bynes is going to core this guy in the face. Yeah, actually, it looked more like the back of his neck, really, than his face. Either way, it, it probably hurts him. That's affirmative. I'm going to bring old K. Stu forward, and K. Stu, if she can see that guy, is going to try and kill him with her brain. Oh, uh, this is going to be... This is going to be unfortunate for you, Mr. Floater. Yeah. Kristen Stewart fucking killed you with her mind. 
You are going to be the laughing stock of Alien Town. You got killed by Kristen Stewart's brain. Heading there now. When I say you're going to be the laughing stock of Alien Town, I mean that sincerely. You are. You may never recover, dude. You should just move to another town and change your name because you're never, ever, ever going to live that one down. How did it not hit that guy? He was highlighted in red when I triggered the ability. I mean, I don't really care because we're just going to panic him anyway, so it doesn't really matter. John Leguizamo here, going to use the power of his brain. And now we have a panic floater as well. Who then shot Lindsay Lohan because shoot, panic means shoot, I guess. That's fair. Yeah, whatever. Lindsay's fine. She can take it. She's tough. She's been around this town a time or two. Lindsay Lohan knows how to take a beating. Quite literally, I mean, Lindsay Lohan knows how to take a beating. She's, uh... Lindsay Lohan has done some shit to get roles, man. Like, some stuff you don't want to know or think about. She's, she, uh... Some of it's real ugly, man. Real ugly. A little bit of brain power here from the rat. <laughs> That's a real fucking creepy laugh, John Leguizamo. Uh, sincerely, I mean, I'm, I'm more impressed than disturbed. That's legitimate, straight-up awful. Jaden Smith, mastering his fear. Cypher Rage, very proud of his son today. Let's see if we can make him more proud by racking up a couple kills here within the zone, Jaden. What do you think? Make the old man proud? Huh? Huh? I'm gonna make him not regret giving birth to you? Huh? All right, then. Clearly you do. And honestly, let's face it, Jaden, you have quite a bit to make up for, so... Take a shot, Lautner. What do you got? Nothing. That's what you got. Oh, come on, Taylor Lautner. It wasn't really bull. It was a bad shot you missed. What more do you want? You missed a bad shot. Just go ahead and reload on Flansburg. Lindsay! Um, we'll probably have Lindsay Lohan come up here, take some cover, and... A little bit more psychic EXP for Lindsay. This guy is going to be real frazzled when the mission is over. Uh, I'm telling you, he's feeling the mental trauma. And a very creepy laugh from Lindsay Lohan. Although, I gotta say, Lindsay, John Leguizamo's was creepier. I mean, yours just uh, didn't have quite the same same flair that John Leguizamo had. I mean, I really felt that John Leguizamo, I, I, he wanted it. I, I, he wanted it more. He really wanted to creep us out. I think yours was just kind of forced, Lindsay. We need to work on that. Should we double tap him? Eh, why the hell not? You know what? Let's go doubly humiliating and kill him with the disabling shot. Because we can. Or not. This won't feel too good. Okay, well, whatever. That's fine. Uh, let's kill him with some collateral damage, then. That'll be fun. Actually, I don't think that even hit him. Alright, now I'm just digging around. So there he goes, running away. He's not panicked. She had to reload. Ah, oh, you poor bastard. Alright. Let, let's stop toying with this guy. This is this is not cool. We should we should stop fucking with him. Get kinda of mean. But uh, let's let's take the kill with Kristen Stewart. She needs EXP probably more than anybody else. Let's see what her hit percentage here is like. You know what? Not good enough that we should risk it, but I'm going to anyway. There we go. Oh, she missed. Never mind. Shot failed to connect. Yeah, you blew up a wall. Congratulations. Is there anybody else who needs EXP? Yeah, John Flansburg does. That's fine. Flansburg, just run and gun in there then. Might as well make use of you. On the move. Could have gone for a capture, theoretically, but I don't really want a plasma carbine. So let's just have John, Dr. Worm Flansburg, shoot that guy in the mouth and end this ridiculous farce. So there's Operation Burning Blade complete. Heading back to barracks, this 200th episode extravaganza on its way to being wrapped up. Hopefully we'll have obtained enough Illyrium from that ridiculous business to uh, begin research on Mind and Machine. Also, we should have gained enough Psychic EXP to level a couple of our troopers, and probably we should have gotten an actual level 4K stew. Or not. Kristen Excellent Stewart. Work all around, Commander. Man, I tell you, she hates success. That's, that's the only explanation. Kristen Stewart is terrified of success. Dr. Flansburg, however, not terrified of success. He's more than ready to succeed at a moment's notice, so... It's gonna be Sprinter for Dr. Worm, and we're turning him into a premier killer. Very short order. Uh, so, Timberlake, you're a Shogun, eh? 
Well, reactive targeting sensors is straight up garbage. I mean, it's a great way to waste ammunition if you're into that kind of thing, but... Uh, Mayhem is intriguing. Very intriguing, actually. And it works on proximity mines. Well, there you go, then. Works on proximity mines, reason enough for me to take it. I do love my proximity mines. All right, then. Four floater corpses. Oh, we got 17 Illyrium, which will be more than enough to complete our research. 10 meld, too. Woo! And an intact power source. I'm surprised someone didn't blow that up just for shits and giggles. Because at this point, we could kind of afford to blow it up just for shits and giggles. So let's begin Mind and Machine, then, which we neglected to start last time. Give Dr. Valen and her 139 boy toys something to do other than, you know, play Galaga on their iPads, which is what they've been doing for, like, the last month. And we'll head up to the Gray Market as well. Just get rid of a little bit of extraneous garbage. We should have one damaged chunk to get rid of. Speaking of extraneous garbage, 71 sectoid corpses? Why are we hanging on to those? It's some kind of weird uh, sort of security blanket attachment disorder where we just uh, can't let go of our fallen foes for fear that they'll rise from the grave and come back to strike us down more powerful than ever. I mean, sure, we've watched Star Wars recently, and that did happen to Darth Vader when he struck down Obi-Wan, which makes me somewhat reluctant to give up the corpses of my fallen foes, but I'd like to point out, Obi-Wan didn't leave a corpse in that scene, so I'm starting to wonder if we'll really the uh, logic kind of breaks down there. Was. Bradford, you're not going to figure out shit except how to get to the bottom of another bottle of Ripple. Fortunately for you, you figured that out long ago. All right, well, that's got all our maintenance tasks taken care of. And with that, I think we'll wrap up this 200th episode extravaganza. If you enjoyed watching, I appreciate your support. If you want to drop a like down in the comments section, it does really mean a lot to us. And if you'd like to see more XCOM on a daily basis, consider subscribing as well. We'll see you again, hopefully before episode 400. Thanks for watching.